Out of nowhere, there was suddenly a West Indian spinner who took a lot of wickets. No one could score off him either, and for a generation his long fingers strangled all the batsmen who went up against him. He was a great player, but didn't always get the respect he deserved, even as he set the world record for the most test wickets ever. Lancelot Richard Gibbs was a great spinner in tests and then retired in 1976 and it would take more than 30 years for another West Indian spinner to have an impact on our game. Sun on the Ryan is now so famous he almost doesn't feel West Indian anymore. He's part of T20 cricket. I was at his first test where I tipped big things for him and that never happened. He struggled finding a first class length when he started took a couple of five wicket hauls and then left test cricket forever. His last match for the West Indies was in 2017 so he's not even really a West Indian player anymore. And if he is known for any team it is Kolkata and there is a reason for that. He has played more for them than anyone else and it's not even really close. So when he doesn't play in the first game of the year at Chennai you notice. And this isn't the first time. Last year Narayan was dropped as well. This is two years in a row that one of the greatest players in the history of this league has been left out. And it's for two completely different reasons. Late last season it was because there was a fear he would be called again for throwing and he received a warning for his action. This year it has more to do with the fact that they just thought that Shakib al Hassan was better. But let us stop there because I think we need to look at just how good Sun on Narayan has been. In 2018, which does feel like several lifetimes ago, he was still arguably the best player in the league. There were some big batting numbers that year and AJ Ty took a wicket every 14 balls, but for match impact, Narayan was huge. That year, he scored 357 runs from 188 balls, scoring faster than Dre Ross. Averaging 22 while almost scoring at two runs a ball is just wrong. And when you're holding down a spot for a, as a bowler as well, it's just insane. That said, his bowling wasn't as good. He was equal sixth in most wickets, but for him this was just an okay year. You could see him middle of the road when you look at the top wicket takers. Most overseas players would take this as a career best year, and he's still not even that far from Rashid Khan. The thing is, he's been a lot better than this. He has on three separate occasions ended up with a bowling average of under 20 when taking more than 20 wickets. Actually, let's take that further. Five times in the league's history has a player taken 20 wickets in a season at an average of below 20 with an economy rate of less than a runner ball. Lasif Malinga, Anil Kumble, Rashid Khan, and Sunil Narayan has done it twice. And in those years he averaged under 60. I mean, <laughs> feels like I'm making this up. Actually, he kept the average under 20 at less than a runner ball for three straight seasons in total. This is Malinga. Imagine being this much better than Malinga for three years. But 2014 was also the last time Narayan was this good. Honestly, I could go on and on like how in a five year period he bowled 11% of the death balls bowled by off spinners, averaging 11 with an economy of 6.6, .6, while the rest of off spin went at 8.4 runs and over and averaged 19. But he's just not that bowler anymore. In fact, like many off spinners of recent years, he's not even close. And it's not that every year he's been worse, and he still has some good numbers, but the crazy coconut banana numbers are long gone. So what has happened? Most people look at one reason, but I think there's probably three separate things that have all come together here. And the fact he survived all three is remarkable. I called him an off spinner earlier, but he's really an offy plus. I'm not a big fan of the mystery spinner as a term. It makes it sound like some guy is only getting wickets by squirting the ball out of their butt. As a general rule, the people that we describe as mystery spinners don't last forever. There is a reason. Batsmen read bowlers for a living, and if they face them enough, they learn things. With Paul Adams, Batsman realised his two stock balls were a different trajectory. Ajanta Mendes was unplayable at the start of his career, but then players realised that he gave little tells with his fingers, and that was soon spread around the world by BBM, and quickly most international batters could play him. He still did well around the fringes, but his major cricket career was pretty much ruined by this. Most of the top order players in this league have faced a lot of Sun on Narayan by now. There are 36 players around the world who have faced more than 50 balls off him. Everyone has seen him on TV. There is plenty of analysis out there. If he was once a mystery, the thrill is gone. There was no way players were going to keep lining up to be dismissed by him as they once had been. 
And now you have players like David Warner and Kale Raul who have dominated him a bit as well. That doesn't mean he's become a bad bowler, but it means that there is less fear in facing him. And I mean, for a while, he was absolutely tormenting players. He was like a gornography surgeon, swaggering around and dissecting souls. So the mystery is gone, but teams also changed how they played him. It wasn't until 2014 that he ever had an economy rate above 10 runs and over. And the second time wasn't until 2016. Once teams realized that if you attack him, you will be dismissed, they stopped attacking him. I showed you his bowling average before for all T20, but here it is again. But beneath it is his economy. You can see that it hasn't gone up that much. In a year of T20 cricket, he's still never gone for more than seven runs and over. Now, it is also true that his numbers went up in the IPL higher, but he still hasn't had a year of going at over eight in the IPL. If he wasn't batting, that would be more of a worry. But with his batting, these are still really solid numbers to put up. But his bowling average is so high that it negates the okay economy and handy batting. Last season, he averaged 60. Forget the fact that he once averaged 13. 60 is bad for anyone. And if he wasn't the Ryan or just some random South African or Kiwi in the first or second season, he wouldn't have been in the team at that point at all. But let's get into the last reason, his bowling action. Remember when I mentioned the Ryan was an all-time great until the end of 2014? Well, in October 2014, it was the first time he was called for an illegal bowling action. A few days later was the second time. Narayan was caught up in the global purge of off-spinners actions. Since merely off-spinners had been getting away with incredible actions. I should point out that I see throwing completely different to most cricket fans. I don't see it as cheating or anything else. I see it as a problem some people have with our actions and it is, should be nothing more than a no ball. If we could do in-game testing, that is all it would be. You would bowl one, your arm would flex too much and you would be called for a no ball. The problem was at that point that the ICC had done nothing for a very long time and it meant that a lot of bowlers actions had degraded and other bowlers who should have been picked up early in their career and remodeled weren't. And then suddenly they went after everyone at once. In total, Narayan has been reported six times. And while the other facts I've mentioned have certainly played a part, I think this is quite obviously the biggest. Narayan has trouble keeping his action legal, at least in part because the ICC allowed him to degree it so poorly without any work for such a long time. In a proper system, he should have been retrained years earlier, or even better, just called every time he did it. And this isn't just the Narayan thing. This is kind of like all of offspin. It's disappearing from the top level of the game as we realize that bowling offspin generally means more flex of the elbow than we would like in cricket. And you can see offspin actually disappearing from T20 cricket. A third is a massive drop off. And it would not be all because of the bans of suspect bowling. Leg spin getting more popular certainly played a part. Plus teams looking at matchup data would be some of this. But finger spin has changed since that ICC crackdown. Pragyan Oja was an Indian player who in 2019 was overlooked for the Euro T20 League. So far had he fallen since being called. He has played 19 pro T20 games since he was called, only one of those in the major league. And in his last three games, he delivered five overs in the SMAT, the lower Indian league, and they went for 55 runs. He retired a couple of years later. Oja is only 34 years old now, so he was in his prime of 27 when he was first called. And this isn't some random player. He played 48 times for India. He was a top quality performer, and being called basically ended his career. Narayan was 25 when he was called. So while Narayan's record now isn't like his early career, what is incredible is that Narayan has not only stayed in the league after being called, but actually continued to be really good for years. And this comes down to a couple of things. Sunil Narayan changed his batting. He started hitting sixes. I was at a Renegades game a couple of years ago when he hit a few and I looked it up and that's why I tweeted this. Look at the date here, December 22, 2016. This is post the chucking call. And so Narayan started working on being more useful by hitting as many sixes as he could down the order. And it worked. Just over a week after this, the captain of the Renegades, Aaron Finch, did something quite interesting with it. Michael Beer is famous in the Big Bash for being a spinner who opens the bowling, and he was really good at it. So Finch wanted to tap the Beer keg, and he decided to try Narayan against him. It actually didn't work. Narayan couldn't get near Beer, who was brilliant at his job, but Narayan actually scored off the quicks. They tried it again in the next game, and another game later on, and three times in total, but the other two were actually failures. But Narayan's next tournament was for Kolkata and they used him as an opener pretty much all the way through the season. And it's gone pretty well since then. A lot of people didn't get his batting because he only averaged ever in the high teens. 
But the point was quite simple. You'd only get a handful of balls from him at the death, and he would struggle to score at that rate later on. Having him play this role essentially lengthened your batting by, let's say, 12 balls per inning, giving you a flyer almost every second match. And think about it this way. In 2016, he became a six-heading tail ender. In 2017, he became an opening batsman. Before both of these, he had shown no incredible promise with the bat. It wasn't always massively successful for his team, but for him, it was a massive change. But it wasn't just his batting that he changed. Narayan used a bowl pretty much two deliveries, an off spinner and a deucera slash carom ball that he had. His off spinner was the one that was called, so he needed another delivery. And so he went to the knuckle ball. I mean, technically he already bowled like a carom ball thing from his knuckle, but this was the seam as slower knuckle ball, a delivery that doesn't rotate, so it acts weird as it comes down for the batter. But that wasn't enough for him. He then decided on a new style of run-up where he would come in hiding the ball, as helped by his coach, Carl Crowe. It meant that batters couldn't look at his grip all the way through his run-up. You only really saw the ball as his arm was coming over to deliver it. Let me be very clear. This is super villain stuff. So in 2014, something happened that basically ended Pragyang Oja's career. And since then, Narayan has learned to hit sixes, evolved to open the batting, perfected the first truly slow knuckle ball, and then stuck the ball up his own bum on the way in just to disguise it. Lance Gibbs might still end up as a better cricketer, even though his legacy was swamped by the fast bowlers that followed. Narayan started like few bowlers ever have in their career. And since then, he's been fighting the game, changing how he plays it, and evolving into something new. Narayan is an absolute marvel. He suffered cricket's second most cancerous allegation, and he tinkered, and he grinded, and the fact that he's still here might be even more remarkable than he was at the start of his career.